Hiya and welcome back once again. I hope you're all doing really well and if you're in the midst of wedding planning, it's going really well for you as well. Um, it's really exciting this week to see so many venues reopening back up, show rounds happening. I know loads of bridal shops are reopening now so everyone's getting out and getting to try on dresses or go and pick up dresses if you haven't um, been able to until now. So I hope if this is you and um, you've been able to do these things then you're really enjoying getting back into it and getting out there and making decisions on your wedding day. Today's video is going to be all about the stationery side and in particular save the dates invitations and RSVPs. I get asked so so many questions about when you're supposed to send things out, what you should include, how you should do it. So I just thought I'd round up all my advice into one little video for you. So if this is something that you're currently looking at at the moment, you can just refer back to this, get all the information you need um, and hopefully it helps you out a little bit. So if this is your first time here, thank you so much for joining me and it is lovely to meet you. Um, and if you're coming back, then thank you for returning. I hope you're enjoying all the videos so far. My name is Laura Beth and I'm a professional wedding planner here in the UK. And this channel, as you all know, is my little wedding world where each week I get to give you hints, tips, stories and secrets into the wedding industry to help make sure that your whole planning journey is so much easier and less stressful. So we'll get straight on in with it today. All you need to know about invitations, RSVPs and save the dates. So I'm gonna start with the very beginning and the first thing you may be considering out to send to your guests is the save the dates. Now these are totally optional and I get asked all the time, do we have to do them? And the answer is no. My advice with this is if you wanna kind of get into wedding planning, you want to let everyone know about it and you want to maybe start doing some DIY or feel like you're starting to plan your wedding, then sending out save the dates can be a really, really nice thing to do. But as a word of warning, I wouldn't send them out too early. If your wedding's in a couple of years time, you may want to hold back on them so much can change. One, if you send them out over a year in advance, people may forget about it, they're going to misplace it and they're not really going to think about it or be putting it in their calendars that early. Similarly, similarly, I've got another word that I can't say on this video, you know what I mean. Guests may change. You never know, especially two years in advance, friends do change. You may meet new people, you may not talk to people, people that you believe you're going to invite now may be very, very different to when it gets to the wedding day. And if you send a save the day out, they're going to expect an invitation. And it's kind of etiquette that they get an invitation if they've got a save the day. So it's always really important to think and consider when you're sending these out. I would usually recommend six to eight months before the wedding day. If it's in this country, if it's abroad, then a little bit earlier, maybe up to a year in advance because people have obviously got to make a lot more arrangements, book flights, they may need to update passports, all that sort of thing. And if it's in this country, especially if it's a weekday or peak holiday season when a lot of people are going to be booking um, trips away and stuff, eight months to a year is going to be a good time to start getting those save the dates out. All that needs to be included on a save the date, keep it really simple, is your name so they know who's getting married, who's invited um, and make that really clear because obviously you don't want people bringing children if it's no children plus ones if they're not invited and when it's going to be happening, so the date of the wedding and where it's going to be happening. So usually you would have picked the venue so you've got the date confirmed before you send the save the dates out and this can be included on that save the date card. Moving on then, you have your invitations and this is something that likely most of you are going to be sending out. Your wedding invitations are going to need to contain all the information that you want your guests to know about. So it's going to need to cover who is invited and again be really specific if you can name the people to avoid confusion, always do that rather than just put in to their surname or to the Joneses, something like that, because then they may think that all the children are invited and if they aren't inviting the children, you need to make that clear. Also, any plus ones, if you don't know the name of their plus ones, then add plus one. If you do, always put their name down on it. As with the say the dates, obviously it's really important to give them a when it's happening, so the date of the wedding and the time it's all kicking off. You may then wish to include other timings for the day. So they've got a bit of an idea of what to expect and when it's gonna be happening um, oh, and where it's gonna be happening. And this will need to include different locations if it's changing throughout the day. So if you've got a reception due one in one place, but you've got a ceremony in another, then you'll need to note that down. And it can be really nice to put travel instructions in there and little maps so people don't get lost along the way. You'll also want to include any information about the food so if there is a set menu you may not need to include it in there you could put it in if you want to but if you're just wanting to leave it to a surprise to the day just make sure there's a little line where people can put in any dietary restrictions so if it's vegetarian, gluten-free, nut allergies or even strong dislikes it can be really nice to know about them in advance and often even if it's a dislike you let your caterers know in advance they're really happy to cater for this and provide something different. 
Instagram. A few other little details to add, it can be really lovely to add in um, options for accommodation, so if there's accommodation available on site, um, you may want to include details into that and how they book it. Um, equally, if there's any sort of room blockage or any sort of reservation code that they might need to use to have those rooms that you've allocated for your wedding day, or just local accommodation options, local B&Bs, hotels, self-catering holiday lets. If you speak to your venue, they'll usually be able to let you have all these details. Other things I like to add in there is something about the dress code. I think it's really nice to let guests know what they should be wearing, as everyone does so many different themes nowadays. This could be whether it's black tie and you're going really formal with kind of ball gowns and um, suits, or maybe you're just going summer country style and you just want everyone in pretty summer dresses. It's just really nice to have this noted there and it will save you a lot of questions. The one other thing I would add on there is anything about gift registry, so whether you've got, say, an Amazon wish list that you've set up that you want guests to be directed to, or that you're accepting money towards your honeymoon, let people know and then you avoid any extra questions. The one way you can really simplify all this information going out on one invitation is to have a link to a wedding website. If you decide to go down that route, and I've got a video all about how to set up a wedding website, if you follow the link down below, you can head on over to that after this video. But it really saves on a lot of time. You can just pop a link on the invitation so they've got the basic details on when, where and who. They can then click the link and find out all that other information that I mentioned just now. A lot of websites will come password protected as well so you can't have any sort of random people getting into it and if you set that up on your um, wedding website make sure you include this in your invitation so they've got all the details and again you're not going to be having to ask answer loads of questions. And then between um, sending the invitations out and the wedding day if anything changes you can just update it on the wedding website and it's going to save you so much time and worry about having to try and keep on top of things and send out so so many emails, messages, phone calls and worry about anyone getting the wrong information. If you set up the website guests will be able to RSVP on there but if you haven't set up a website you will need to include an RSVP card within your invitation and this will just need to be a simple card that they can fill in who's coming or tick who's coming so you know it's only certain names. They can put in dietary requirements or menu options and it can be nice to add in any other little questions you want, messages to the messages to the couple or even any song requests for the DJ that evening. In the envelope as well with your invitations and your RSVP you will need a return envelope for your guests as well and this should already be um, addressed to your address and be stamped as well so they can just fill in the details, pop it in, seal the envelope and send it back. Of course if you've got the website option you really don't need to be worrying about that part as people will go online and RSVP that way. I get asked all the time when should I be sending out invitations and it is going to depend on your circumstances where you're getting married and time of year. If it's kind of a standard weekend in the UK not in big holiday season then about three months before the wedding day is quite standard. If you're having your wedding on a weekday so people are going to have to book off work or it's during a busy holiday season so peak summer holidays, peak Christmas then you may want to get it out a little bit earlier so people have got time or send the save the dates as an alternative option if you don't want to send your invites out that early and if you're going abroad I would give at least six months warning as people need to update passports they need to book um, travel accommodation and it's a lot more of a commitment because they've got to book a lot more time off work so giving them a little bit more warning is great again this can be avoided if you send out save the dates but it's totally personal choice on what you want to do I recommend three months if you're getting married in this country just because you don't want to give too long between sending the invitation out and getting the RSVPs back. If you leave it too long, people are likely to just chuck the invitation on the side and not really think about it. So leaving them only a couple of weeks to respond means that they get that invitation, they fill in the RSVP card or pop on the website to do it and it's back nice and quickly for you and you've got them, you've grabbed their attention, you've got them and they're not going to forget about it. One last thing to add at the bottom of the invitations, I said this was going to be a short video and um, as usual I'm able to talk about any subject for quite a amount of time. I get asked when you should send out your day invitations and your evening invitations if you've got kind of separate guests coming to different bits and I would always suggest sending all the invitations out at one stage um, and in one go. It saves you work because you don't then have to kind of remember to come back to it, you can just send all those invitations out and it's done. And equally for guests, um, if they don't know, they're expecting an invitation but they haven't had one and their friends have had one but they're only invited to the evening but they're not really sure, it can be a little bit awkward and people who've got the invitations don't really want to start talking about your wedding if they don't know that their friends and other friends in the group are going to be there even if it's just for the evening do. So 
So I would always recommend get everything out in one go, save you some work, you don't want to add up any extra hours on having to do stuff later down the line. Moving on to the last little bit, the RSVPs. Um, I would always say make sure you set a really clear deadline on when you want them to respond by and I would usually say do this for a month before the wedding. A lot of the websites online say two or three weeks. To me that feels like it's cutting it really tight. I'd probably go even longer than this to be honest but four weeks, a month before the wedding is quite a good point to make sure you've got all the details in. You'll need to get all your final stuff off to your stationer if that's what you're doing. So if you've got table plans to be printed, table cards, maybe you've got someone doing calligraphy for you on them, you'll want to get that sent off and give them about three weeks to get it done, printed and back to you. Equally, your catering team, your venue, chairs, tables, linen, cutlery, crockery, all those bits are going to want final numbers at least two weeks before the wedding. Anything after that, then you may be paying for things that you don't actually need on the day. So giving yourself a deadline of four weeks to go means you're going to get most of them back in by the four week point. There will be stragglers so you've then got time to kind of message them, hopefully encourage them to do it then or pick up the phone and call them if they're being really late and you definitely need to get your numbers in. But giving yourself that extra time it just reduces the stress. You don't want to be running around two weeks before your wedding day and finding out that you've got 10 people less coming to your wedding, but now you've already paid for their meals and all the stuff associated with it. So give yourself time on that one. So I hope you found this interesting. With stationery, invitations, RSVP, save the dates, there's a lot of different details and everyone is going to be slightly different on what they want. Um, but this is kind of just a standard idea of all the things that you should be including. So I really, really hope that helps you. If you've got any questions on this subject or a subject you'd like me to cover, just pop it in the comments section. Um, I always read through the comments and get back to as many of you, well, all of you as I can. And yeah, hit the like button. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the subscribe button and turn the bell notification on to make sure that you're notified of any future videos that I post on here. I post twice a week when technology isn't failing me and I bring you all the information I can and insights into the wedding industry to make sure that your planning journey is way easier. So I hope you've been enjoying all the videos so far. I've been loving the feedback from you all and all the new subscribers we've had here. So have a wonderful rest of your week, whatever you are doing. Thank you for joining me on the living room floor as always and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.